Hello again to part three of creating a customer testimonial page in Lectora. This time we're going to talk about creating these talk bubbles here. And um, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't remember Lectora having a talk bubble shape, and you would be correct. Although they do have, if you go to tools, shapes, and lines, they do have a bunch of options here from arrows to um, different shapes, triangles, all sorts of things, but no talk bubble. Uh, for that, you know, I would go to Photoshop to create something like that, but I understand that a lot of people don't have or know how to use Photoshop. So um, I actually use something that people probably do have, which is PowerPoint. So here I have PowerPoint. Um, I recommend 2007 or 2010 to do something with um, creating images in PowerPoint. And if you go here to insert on the ribbon and shapes, down here in callouts you actually have a talk bubble shape. There's a rounded one. I'm going to use the square one here. Just drag on the screen like that and then adjust my little bottom part there like that. That's about how it looks. Um, and of course I changed my colors, but we talked a lot about colors in the first video. But and the way you would do that is you would go right click on it, go to format shape, this pops up, and the first option here is your fill. Come down, come down here, it says solid color, and then you have these options by default, or you can go to more colors, and once again, there we have it, these values, red, green, and blue, you can add those in to match a uh, color scheme that you have, like we pulled from the color.adobe.com website. Uh, I'm not going to do that here, just because we, we talked so much about colors before. and then there's also the line color. So that looks good, but um, now you'll notice in Lectora when we preview these we actually have a rollover effect where it goes from a light green background to a white background. So in order to do that I have two separate images I created in PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste another one of these. Just pull it over and right click again, go to Format Shape and instead of keeping the solid fill as the same blue, I'm just going to change it to white. And there we have it. So, alright, let me just change this. It's bugging me. Something a little more subtle. So we went from, this would be our normal state of the image, and then on mouse over, it would turn white like that. Now the thing that's kind of weird about PowerPoint, and I should have done this first, is shrunk the first one down before copying. is that you can go right click again and there's this option to save as picture. Um, it's kind of hard to control the size of how this is going to turn out. It ends up a little bigger than you would think. Um, there may be a way to control that. If there is, I haven't found it. So if you go to save as picture, the important thing is to save as a PNG file that keeps the background transparent. Otherwise, if you save as something like a JPEG, you're going to have a white background around it no matter what. So save it as a PNG and it'll be transparent and then save it um, ideally in your images folder of your title, wherever your title folder is at. And I've gone ahead and done that here in Lectora. So on the page we're creating, I'm going to add a button. It's right up here or you can go to add object button. 
and you'll notice that um, we can import three images to use as a button. There's our normal state like we talked about, our mouse over state, and a click state image. You don't have to use um, a click state image. You really don't even have to use a mouse over image. So I'm going to import from file. And like I said, I saved it in my images folder, so there it is. It's a PNG file like we talked about. So there's my normal state. I'm going to click open. Looks good. Come over here to my mouse over. Click import. And open up my mouse over version. Like I said, we can leave clicked alone. So hit apply there. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't I do not want it always on top. I find I kind of run into problems when I have buttons always on top. They clash with the things I'm have uh, at the root of my title that I I do want to have on top instead of my buttons. So I always uncheck that. And I also want to use empty alt tag when published. Just because we're doing a lot of mouse over effects and um, by default the alt tag will also show up as a um, mouse over hint which shows the text in what you have here for the button name and that can get in the way of what we're trying to do so I'm just going to check that it looks good hit OK or apply and let's pull this over here to line up with our grid like so and I am going to create by copying and pasting three more versions of this. I am going to have them off center a little bit so I can show you how to align things properly. So how am I going to change these ragged, not aligned talk bubbles to be like our example? where they're perfectly aligned. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is select them all. And I can just control click on each one. Or I can drag and select them all. And then, if you're not familiar with them, they probably look like a bunch of crazy shapes and lines. But these are actually the align tools. And the one we want to start with is this one it has a line on top and it has two shapes below it we want to align to top so whichever one of these is the highest the other ones are going to align to it so I click that and there you go so now they're all aligned um, horizontally to be um, on the same line there so that looks good but they're not evenly spaced apart luckily there's another option if you come over here looks like an H to space horizontally. It will automatically measure uh, an equidistant measurement between how far these are spaced apart, your first and your last. So as an example, if I undo what I just did, pull this guy in like this, select them all again, and then say space horizontally, they're going to be spaced like that. But we do want this like so, like that. Looks good. Now, in order to get the second row, the cool thing is we have the first row figured out. We can copy that. And if I say paste, it's kind of weird. Nothing happened. It's kind of a little quirk in Lectora. You can't have multiple buttons selected and paste at the same time. So I come over here in my Explorer window, let's click the bottom one, and then I will paste. So now there are my four that I want in the second row are on top of the four I want in the first row. So I will drag those down while they're all selected. Now notice they're kind of going all over the place. It'd be nice if I could keep them aligned. While you're dragging, if you hold the Shift key down, that will keep them aligned perfectly either 
vertically or horizontally. And that works in a lot of programs. So something to keep in mind. So that looks about right. And there we go. Now we have our um, eight customer testimonial buttons. So if we preview this, our mouse over effects work nice. Now all we need are our text boxes and our actions that will make this thing possible. So um, watch the rest of the videos to see how that comes together. Thanks.